have a sample that is packed with VM Protect, and we have it open in IDA. And as you can see by looking at these segments, it clearly is packed with VM Protect. As you can see from the graph, there's nothing in the main function except for a jump, which takes us to here. And we see another jump. And when we take this jump, we get to here. And there, there isn't much information here really. It's just another call. So this is another way that packers use obfuscation and basically try and make as many jumps as possible, making it more difficult to follow what's going on. So what we can simply do is just follow the same routine we did with the last sample and just go to the last call or jump in the function and see where it takes us. So here, take this one, scroll all the way to the bottom. You can see there's a call here, another call here, it calls this again, another call, scroll all the way down. Now we get a jump, another jump takes us up to here. So because that's the last jump, it just loops around. We're gonna wanna take this branch, which is a call to this function here another call, another jump, and this function seems to be quite interesting. If we take a look at this one, there's uh, not a lot here. There's some functions that IDA has hidden here, but if we go back, you can see that before it returns, it actually pushes this argument to the stack, and if you remember before, I said that the return instruction will always return to the address that is at the top of the stack, and as this is pushed before return is called, this will end up returning into the address in argument 2c. So what we can do to double check that I am correct is by looking at the address here and I've already got it open in x32 debug. So if we do control G and we want to jump to the address 3c bf132. So 3c bf132. And we can see it. here's a return. So let's put a breakpoint on this address here. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to now run to it, see what happens. So as you can see, we've hit the breakpoint. So now when we hit the return, it will take us to whatever address is stored in ESP plus 44, which in this case is this function here. So actually what we can do is we can follow in disassembler and this is the correct place. So now we're in a section of code that is obviously being decrypted or something. So what we can do now is let's scroll down looking for any calls or jumps to registers or memory addresses. Calling functions here. Loads of jumps. It's quite difficult to actually keep track of what's going on because they have so many different jumps. So this jump will take you all the way down there and then you'll end up going back up where you came from. So it's quite difficult to follow along. So what we're going to do is just going to see if we can find any calls to memory addresses, put a breakpoint on that and run to it. But before doing so, we'll put a breakpoint on virtual allocate and virtual protect just to see if, you know, if our breakpoint originally doesn't trigger, then it will definitely trigger virtual allocate or another API call. So it doesn't seem to be much here exactly. So what we can do instead is let's simply just put a break by so we can see the return here and it calls this function so it doesn't seem to be anything really interesting here it's probably calling the different function so what we're going to do is breakpoint on virtual allocate and breakpoint on virtual protect and let's put a breakpoint on load library just in case that if none of these get hit then it eventually will hit load library and we unpack the process. So let's just take note of where we are, 03C. So let's run, or we hit the breakpoint first. Let's run again. Okay, so it seems that this is called in a loop. So let's actually remove that because then we don't keep hitting it all the time. Remove that. And now we hit virtual protect. It seems to call it on the original executable or at least a region of memory. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run, see what happens, calls it again. So seemingly calling virtual protect on these different regions of memory. And now we, it starts to fill it in. It looks like this looks like Delphi related strings. And based on the uh, file name, you can probably assume that it is in fact Delphi. So well, we, still no real executable there, but I assume it's going to be overwriting the executable that is running. So let's run again. 
keep hitting vert to protect. Okay. And it seems to be running a lot of code here. Interesting, no calls to virtual allocate. Oh, there we go. It calls virtual allocate. Right click, follow and dump, see what happens. Okay. Nothing really. And then we hit load library. Okay, let's jump to the user code. And this is quite interesting. Let's actually take a look at the strings because we're definitely in a different region of memory than to what we were in with the strings to load. Definitely seems that we are in the unpacked code itself because there are a lot of strings. As we can see, HTTP client. We can see it's mentions Delphi here. And it didn't do this before. We can actually restart this to make sure that it didn't say this, uh, all these strings to be double sure that it is unpacked. But there's a lot of information here. So let's do HTTP, see how many different things pop up. And we can see that, you know, this wouldn't appear in a packed file. So we're going to assume that we are in fact in the unpacked code. So let's jump to the return. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit the return again and hit the return again until we get to what looks to be a main function. Okay, so we hit load library. Let's remove that actually because we don't need that anymore. We already gathered that we're in an unpack section. So jump to the return hit virtual allocate could be interesting let's jump to the return again jump to the return again seems to have a lot of stuff here uh, we can potentially try and dump it from here although let's see if we hit the return again okay so this could be because there's a lot of functions here, it looks like we perhaps in the unpacked region of memory, although it doesn't seem to have an entry point anywhere. So there's no push EVP that you'd normally see in a entry point in an executable. So let's run to the return. And obviously it didn't call much in here because it was quite quick. So let's return again. Okay, let's step to the return, return to user code and do it one more time, see what happens. Okay, we call virtual allocate again. Let's follow that and dump. Hit the returns each time. Okay, still no sign of the entry point anywhere. Okay, have we been here? Maybe not, let's go all the way up to the top. And here, so you can see there's a push EVP here. So, and there's one here as well. So this looks like it actually could be the entry point. So let's just double check by looking in here, seeing if there's anything interesting. There's a few calls. Okay. So there's jumps to different reasons of memory. So let's say that this is the entry point. What we're gonna do to dump it is we're gonna go up to here double click the push EVP and type in OEP for the original entry point. Click OK and open up Scylla. And this should match, but it doesn't. Let's see if we can do the IAT auto search, get the imports. Okay, so you can see it says it's found 127 valid APIs. And the reason why there seems to be so many APIs that are invalid is probably because it's a Delphi uh, program and x32 debug is mainly meant for you know c and c plus plus executables so what we can do is let's change the oep here to the one that we've actually put the oep marker on normally it should do it automatically but in this case not so so eb28 iat auto search get imports it looks like it's just found the same one okay so either it's found more stuff or it's just got the same import address table so what we can do now is let's dump it so to the desktop save and because if we open up PE bear now and we open up the dumped executable and let's check the imports because we dumped it with Scylla we can see there that it's resolved all the imports for us it's fixed the executable we can see this definitely looks like a generated file name. It doesn't seem like a legitimate piece of software. So we can assume in this case, we have unpacked it. 
So if we actually check the section headers, we can see there's still the BMP section, which is quite interesting, but we, let's choose to ignore that for now. Maybe it has a different section that is later unpacked. So because this is a massive file, it will take a while to open up in IDA. Should have closed actually, let's open it up in IDA again. Okay, and now we want to open up the 56 megabyte file. So you can, it's definitely another hint that we've unpacked it because it's much bigger. So it's not compressed or anything. So if we choose to open it, it will take a long time to analyze it. We can also use the tool that comes with Flare, the uh, VM, which is a Delphi analyzer like IDA. However, because it's such a you know massive file, it would take a long time. If we do Shift 12 to see if we can view the strings. While we wait for that, let's, okay, let's go to the desktop and we can actually do a comparison with P bear and let's just load the dumped file and we want to load the original file which is this one we can see that these sections here there isn't much data in it and compared to you know this section here if we look at the dumped executable and the still packed executable the text section is for some reason pointing to the executable header this is the MZ whereas this actually points to code so if we keep going down, there's, there's nothing really in here. If we go to the section headers, the raw size for everything is zero, except for this uh, VM protect section one, the relocation and the resources. Whereas if we go to the section headers of this one, we can see you know the, the actual raw size and raw address. So we can be pretty certain that we've unpacked it correctly. And looking at the strings, it definitely seems so mentions to socket servers, connections and everything. So now that we've unpacked the sample of VM protect, we can now move into unpacking the PE compact file. So let's move over to that now.